Hello. This is Senator Barack Obama, and today is Wednesday, November 15th, 2006. Uh, on Tuesday, the American people spoke, and we have a new democratically controlled House, as well as a democratically controlled Senate. This is a moment that potentially could be rather historic. Barack Obama is projected to be the next president of the United States of America. Because of what we did on this day, in this election, at this defining moment, change has come to America. I want to thank every member of Congress who stood up tonight with courage and conviction to make health care reform a reality. Now, let me say about unemployment insurance, we talk about it as a safety net and the rest. This is one of the biggest sti uh, stimuluses to our economy. The economist will tell you this money is spent quickly, it's, it uh, injects demand into the economy, and is job creating. It creates jobs faster than almost any other initiative you can name. The kind of 100% rejection of any reform whatsoever that you saw in the House of Republicans. I think the Senate Republicans are a little smarter than that. If they don't, uh, uh, if they don't uh, adopt that wise path, we're going to get a bill. We're going to get a bill. Let me just, and it's bottled up in the Senate somehow. Would you uh, rather see something not passed at all, or something which is is somewhat compromised? I answered the question before you finished. We're going to get a bill. Thank you all very much. Yeah. That's who do you like better, your mother or your father? Yeah. <laughs> and they say all these things with a straight face, as though we're morons. Maybe we are. We keep electing the same people to Congress who are bankrupting our country. Last week, there was an estimate that the United States of America will be bankrupt within seven to ten years. The mightiest economy the world has ever known is going down the toilet because these clowns in Washington, D.C. refuse to rein in spending. It is an absolute disgrace. The new right, an emerging fact of life in 21st century America. The party movement that became so widely known over the summer is now trying to better organize itself and it apparently poses a significant threat to incumbent politicians. A recent Rasmussen poll found in a generic ballot that Democrats give 36% of the Tea Party of the, of the vote. A Tea Party candidate picks up, are you ready for this? 23%. And Republicans get some 18%. It's, it's, it's really simple. Uh, our, our government, Congress, Senate, is, is elected and gives an oath to uphold the Constitution. As your U.S. Senator, I hereby pledge to you, I will not vote for a single bill that I can't justify based on the text and original understanding of the Constitution. No matter what the bill says, it's This campaign is about opposing tax and spend. Let's make a deal. Politics as usual. I have a message, a message from the Tea Party. A message that is loud and clear and does not mince words. We've come to take our government back. In response, Congress and the President immediately went to work on the Disclose Act. This legislation restores transparency and accountability to federal campaigns and ensures that the Americans know when Wall Street, big oil, and health insurers are the ones behind political advertisements. Look, in Alice in Wonderland, it is said, if I had a world of my own, everything would be nonsense, nothing would be what it is, because everything would be what it isn't, and contrary-wise, what is it wouldn't be, and what it wouldn't be, it would. You see? They call it the Disclose Act. It is, in, in fact, the Disguise Act. Let's get right down to it. Why are the Republicans opposed to restricting campaign donations in American campaigns, both local, state, and federal? Why? is because Republicans favor big business, and big business favors Republicans. There's nothing in the First Amendment that says that uh, we can't 
ask somebody to stand by their words. We're not inhibiting free speech. We're just saying if British Petroleum is going to run uh, a, a, a swift boat ad against anybody here, they ought to say that who they are. Now remember, corporations are not just profit. They keep talking about oil coming They forget about national right to life. They forget about all these other organizations that actually have a corporate structure. Most political organizations do. That's what we're talking about. A clear example of this is where the bill applies onerous restrictions on corporations which may wish to involve themselves in political activity while carving out large exceptions for unions which traditionally support the democratic agenda. It's evident while this legislation increases disclosure requirements that imposes unconstitutional restrictions on free speech just in time to influence the outcome of the midterm elections. I urge my colleagues to vote no on the Disclose Act, to vote no on the rules, and uphold their oath of office. They have refused our proposals to make this bill effective in 2011 because they want to change the law this year to affect this election, no matter that there will be no explanatory regulations and no review to ensure that the law can complies with the Constitution. Despite all the rhetoric, all the rhetoric that we heard about this bill, the simple purpose is, Mr. Chairman, who's saying it, who's paying it? Frankly, uh, this legislation reflects the First Amendment because what it says is we want transparency. This is your First Amendment. It's not my First Amendment. It's not the Democratic leadership's First Amendment. And yet they are auctioning off parts of this First Amendment by this bill. Why do I say that? Some people are more equal than others. Mr. Speaker, I hold in my hand uh, a version of the Constitution. I find it instructive that uh, one of the members of the other side of the aisle, when she got down here to talk about the uh, Constitution, said, I have this version of the Constitution. As far as I know, there's only one version of the Constitution. On this vote, 219, yeas, 206, nays, the bill is passed. where some, because of their power and influence, are allowed to exercise First Amendment rights unfettered and others are not, it is a sorry day. And to do it under the rubric of disclosure is even worse. But that's what we have here.